Hello everybody, Jameez Promer here back again with another awesome video. And in today's video, we will be talking about the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 and the top nine overlooked features or some features that either you forgot or you have completely missed. Now, before we move on, if you are brand new here at the channel of Jameez Promo and you own a Samsung Galaxy device, don't forget to hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications to get notified for future videos. And don't forget about that playlist tab on the very top to check out the entire playlist I've made so far for the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. To start this video off, let's talk about a feature that a lot of you are probably already using, but you might have overlooked one small step that could improve your always on display. So the always on display is a screen right before the lock screen showing you your date and time and notifications, but you might not have noticed that you're able to set up a GIF as your always on display image. To set this up, you'll pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon, and then you'll go down to where it says lock screen. Now inside of lock screen, you'll see this option right over here that is called clock style. So as you go through this menu here, you will be able to see that there's a bunch of different clock styles you are able to use for your always on display as well as the lock screen. But because we are talking about the always on display, you might have already gone through here and glanced at all these different clock styles. You probably went through, changed some of the colors, um, but there is one that you might have missed or just gone right over. Now this one right here is actually one that you're able to add a GIF. Now there is some pre-installed that if you hit on this button here called add GIF, you're able to use one of these pre-installed or pre-downloaded GIFs on your always on display. But now let's say that you don't want to use one of those pre-installed GIFs and you want to have one that you have created by yourself that's inside of your own gallery. So if you go to add image, you are able to add just a normal everyday image if you would like. But if you have a GIF that you have created yourself, you're able to have that one set as well. And then once you have one selected and you're done, hit on the done on the very top, it'll have it saved. And then when you hit on your power button or whenever your phone goes off to sleep, you'll be able to see that you're always on display now has a small little movie that's playing. Feature number two that is highly useful but also overlooked is Snap Window. So Snap Window is a part of multi-window where you're able to pretty much lock in a window on the top where you're able to pretty much use it as a reference to use another application. So what I mean by this is that a lot of people when they press and hold on recent apps, it'll pop up multi-window running two applications fully at the exact same time. So first off, let's head over into the settings. So if you pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon, you're gonna head down to where it says advanced features. Now inside of advanced features, this is where you go to multi-window. So as I said from before, with multi-window, you're able to use the recents button by a press and hold. Now if you click on this little button here, you're able to tell it what to do when you press and hold on the recents button. Most people's have their setup as the split screen window, so you're using two applications at the same time, but Snap Window is the one that we will be talking about. So Snap Window is fantastic when you just wanna have a quick reference of something to where maybe you need a text message or send somebody an email. So how about we head over into Tools, and a lot of people might be using this one with Calendar. Now inside of calendar, let's say that you really only need to look at these couple weeks here to figure out the best time to maybe set up an appointment. So if you press and hold on the recents button, this is where you're able to move this up and maybe you really only need to just check out these days right here and then you hit on done. So what will happen is that this will be locked on the very top and then now you just choose your application to run on the bottom. So I'm gonna go through here and this isn't any of the applications I need. Uh, so let's go inside of Allo. As I go inside of this little uh, conversation here with Brett, uh, this is now I'm able to check out my calendar on the very top without it really going anywhere. Um, I am able to go left and right, but I really just need to check out these two weeks. I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna message them back. Um, looks like January 9th, is the day that works the best for me as it is freed up. I'm able to send this thing off. And then once you hit on that home button, if you need to get out of your application on the top that you have snapped, you're able to close the application. So it's a fast way to reference an application instead of going to recents, you know, going into something that's over here, heading back home, going back over here, getting back into the application. It's just one of those nice, fast, easy ways as a fast reference by snapping it to the top. Feature number three that you could have missed or maybe you just forget to use is by using that swipe to either call or text message somebody. So this one's not inside of the phone application. If you actually just swipe up or go inside of your application tray, when you move over to where it says your contacts, 
Once you open up contacts, you'd be able to check out all your contacts that's on the top, uh, if you have them set up as favorites or not. But one of the things you are able to do is you can swipe going from the left to the right. You're able to call this person instantly, or you'd be able to swipe it the other way and send them a text message. To turn on this setting, you wanna pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon, and then you're gonna go right back over into advanced features. Inside of advanced features, when you scroll on down, you're gonna see this option here, which is called swipe to call or send messages. Now, it's really nice because a lot of times you might pretty much touch on your contact and then do a call, but if you just simply want to call them, give it a fast little swipe, you're able to do it that way quick and easy. Feature number four is not really overlooked, but it's not really known by many people. So earlier I showed you where you're able to set up a GIF for your always on display. Well, the other day I set up a stop motion video, which I turned it into a GIF and it's actually pretty fun. All I did was I just opened up my uh, camera on the phone. I set up a little Minecraft figure. I took a picture of it and then I moved it just a little bit, took another picture. You pretty much get the point as I kind of move it a little bit, I take another image and then I was able to create this as a GIF. So how you're able to do this is as you are looking at your gallery, on the very top right hand side, you'll see where it says more options. And this is where you're able to create GIF. Now, you don't really have to make it into a small little stop motion video like I did, but it's actually pretty fun to do. Um, but you are able to create a little collage of one picture and then the next picture and then the next picture of maybe a vacation you did. Now, after you choose those images that you would like to create as a GIF, you just hit on create GIF. Now inside of here, you're able to change the speed. So let's say that maybe you went on vacation and you're creating a GIF, a little slideshow of all your pictures. You're able to take the speed extremely slow so everybody can still see the image of it pretty clearly, but it goes on to the next. But if you're creating one that's stop motion like I did, you're able to change the speed of pretty much however you want it to look. Uh, you can also make it go backwards if you would like, uh, and then you can also make it do a little bit of a loop. Now for me, I just make it go forward because if it's already creating a GIF, I don't need it to loop as well. And then once it's all done, you're able to hit on save and then pretty much what will come out of this because I already have it saved is going to be this right here. Now I love it because you're able to share it on uh, YouTube and Facebook and you can set it in a, in a text message. A, a GIF is just a GIF you're able to send everywhere. So you're able to create something fantastic and get it sent. Feature number five is another great tool, and I definitely see this one as being overlooked or forgot or rarely used. Now, this one is called Glance. So if you open up your air command and as you go through your spindle here, you'll notice that it says Glance. Now, if yours does not say Glance, that just means you have to go in inside and add a shortcut. It just means that it was one that was not selected. And as you have Glance inside of your spindle, it's a little similar to Snap Window, but it's in a different way. So for this example, instead of having the calendar be pretty much the point of reference, of what we're trying to check out, how about you head inside of a text message? And maybe this is the person you're having conversation with. Uh, what you're able to do is hit on that air command. You're gonna go all the way down to where it says glance and it's going to minimize it on the very bottom. You just hover the S Pen over that small little square. It picks it up right away. Now, maybe you are still in conversation with that person, but you also wanna watch YouTube. So as you're watching YouTube, something goes on and maybe you hit on like the pause button, you hover over to see if it's important. Uh, maybe you are trying to get directions from a friend and maybe this is your Google Maps. You have to go back to see what they stated. But one of the nice things too, is that you're able to click on the area to respond back. Um, and as you say hi, or hey, I just passed the railroad, whatever the case, when you hit on that down arrow, it's going to go right on back and then now you're back over inside of your maps. So you can see a lot of different use cases scenarios for glance uh, and if you do want it to pretty much be ended you press and hold on that square and then place it in remove feature number six is one that i actually love to use it's something that's a little bit more personal than just sending a regular text message so inside of messages and if you pull up that area where you're able to send a text um, as long as you're using the samsung keyboard you have the option on the very top that is called live message so live message is super fun. It's a way that you're able to communicate with somebody, make it a little bit more personal. Uh, and so one of the things you're able to do is on the bottom, you can change the color of the background, you know, as you go through it. Um, let's say that we just choose on this purple,
purple color. Uh, you can also put a picture on the background of it if you would like to. And you can also put in your own little AR emoji. So I'm gonna keep it simple with a color. Um, also on the very top left hand side, you can choose how you want your little writing to come through. Do you want it to be a normal ink, which ink is just gonna look like this, uh, which I should probably change the color for this one. So I'm gonna place this one over to white. Uh, so you can just see it's just a normal little line. Uh, outside of that, you do have another one here, which is glow. You also have one that are sparkles, hearts, snowflakes, and then this one's rainbow. Probably the one that most people use is gonna be sparkle or glow. So as you go through here, it's a really cool animation. You can say happy new year, happy birthday, I love you, you know, whatever the case. Um, and also on the very top right hand side, you can see all the different ones that you have used. So if you say I love you, babe, or if there's something else that you say all the time, you're able to choose it. And then once you have it all, uh, uh, you know, pretty much there, you're able to hit on send. And then once you send it, they're gonna receive that as a GIF as well. This is just one of those that is, you know, set up inside of the keyboard, it's something that uses the S Pen. It could be something that you noticed, maybe you used it the first week, but when you start using it more and more and more, you actually find out that you like it more and more and more. Feature number seven is dealing with your Samsung Notes. So I have to admit that I am a huge note taker when it comes over to this phone. As you go through here, you can see that there's just a bunch of different things that are written, uh, but a lot of times it's also done through text. And one of the reasons why is because as I go through here, uh, I might pretty much try to write things, milk, you know, eggs, or maybe if I'm writing something, you know, I will see you later. Well, as you're checking this out, it's not really aligned. It's not really straight. It's actually not that great, um, which that just rhymed. But anyways, what you're able to do is as you're still inside of the pen, this is the one that we're talking about for this one. It's called the easy writing pad. If you choose on this very bottom right hand side, you're going to see that all your words that you're writing is going to be over here, but you write it inside of this, this space. So let's say, you know, I will see you and as you do that you can see that it is in that line it's in between the lines like a little pen pad or whatever the heck uh, and now it's going to keep it pretty organized for you so i will see you later today now you know some of the things that can also help out is by changing the thickness of your pen uh, one of the other things you are able to do is if you need this to go to another spot so maybe you're making a list you can say you know a word here uh, and then also what you're able to do is change this down over here. You can add in Word. So, I mean, it just, you're, you're able to basically align things, which makes it super cool. Now, one of the other things a lot of people also forget that you're able to do inside of this is adding in a image. So if you go inside and you add in, let's say an image, um, so let's say that we do this one right here. Uh, one of the nice things that is pretty cool with this one is that I could, let's see, I'm gonna delete this on the very top press and hold, I'm going to drag this down, uh, which this is actually a pretty big image, so let's make it smaller. And right here, I'm just gonna put it there, which is below the rest of my notes, you know, that's right up over here. So again, uh, you know, if you're maybe making um, a shopping list, you're able to have words, and then you can have your image, and then you can just say, um, you know, this, whoops, you can't even read that blue. How about we head over into the color of, let's go to white. So bring it over here, done. And so I'm gonna say like this one. And then you're able to actually write on that image as well. Feature number eight is called direct pen input. So direct pen input is a way that you're able to hover the S Pen over any text field. Maybe it's a text message, maybe it is your Google search bar, and you're gonna see a small little T that pops up. So this is where you're able to use your handwriting that converts into text. So this one's actually pretty cool. Uh, maybe you wanna say, you know, I will See you later. Now, as you write that one down, it's gonna put it over inside a text for you. You do have a space bar, you have a period, and you do have your back, you have your return, and if you do need to pull up your keyboard, you're able, also able to pull up the keyboard as well. But if you just wanna bring up that little uh, text writing area again of direct pen input, hover the S Pen over that area again, touch on that small little T. I do need to have a small space there. Uh, and then this is where you're able to pretty much go on and on and on. Now, if there's any word that you misspell, uh, just draw 
a line through it and it will pretty much do, you know, an English class or handwriting class or whatever. When you do that little dash through it, it deletes those letters. It's the same thing here. And there's a lot more things you're able to do, you know, to make things bigger and smaller and change them and things like that. But direct pen input is actually pretty fun if you want to send a text message without putting the S Pen away. Now, if you'd like to turn this feature on, pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings button, and then you're going to go down to where it says advanced features. Inside of advanced features, you'll go over to where it says S Pen, and then inside of S Pen, this is where you see direct pen input. So you can toggle it off, you can toggle it on, you can actually choose the option, and then you can read it and see a little bit more of what direct pen input is able to do. And then for the last feature, I'm gonna go to an awkward camera angle, but I wanna show you something inside the camera, and it's referred to as the auto exposure lock or auto focus lock. So you can see that there's a ring light that is on the very top over here, and if I press and hold in that area where it's super light, you'll see that there's a small little circle, and it says auto focus and auto exposure lock. So if you're at a concert and all the lights are crazy, or maybe you're trying to take a picture of a sunset, you're trying to make it to where you can see more of the sun or the beautiful reds, but it's not really looking too great, you're able to press and hold anywhere else. Or maybe you're in the garage trying to take a picture of a motorcycle, but it's super dark uh, and you want it to brighten up a little bit. Um, if you were to actually, you can see where this area here where it's super dark, if you press and hold, you'll be able to lighten it up because you're auto uh, locking onto that exposure of darkness, which will lighten up the image. Now, if I go on the very top over here and I press and hold on the ring light, you're gonna see everything else get super dark while this one is in focus because the exposure is set to something a little bit higher. And then if you just untap it, you can see how it kind of goes in between the two that we were talking about from, from before because it's just pretty much balancing it out. So this has been the top nine list of the features or settings that could be overlooked or that's something that you have missed. Now, if there is any of these that you guys have learned today, maybe your favorite ones that you've learned, maybe something that you might be using more in the future, write a comment below this video letting me know which of these is your favorite. And also, if you liked this video, make sure you guys give this thing a huge thumbs up. And also, don't forget to hit on subscribe right over here in the very bottom left hand side, that little red circle you can subscribe there share this video with your friends and family and social media sites and i'll see you guys on the next one